Okay, folks, we're going to do a little uh, visual manipulation explanation of some of the math and computations that are going on uh, in our media and how people are not only being misled, uh, but are also being incentivized to panic uh, over, you know, information that when looked at, I think with a little bit of a clearer lens, uh, isn't as overwhelming as it could be, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, you know, how the math works. And these are all representative numbers to show relationships. They're not scaled. They're not, you know, this is like just a hypothetical uh, visual demonstration to show how these numbers can be misleading. Okay, so we're going to say that there are 50 people that have coronavirus. Out of these 50 people, we're going to say that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. We're going to say twenty. Of these 50 total people that have, let's say, positive case or have coronavirus, out of these 50, 20 display symptoms. Now, depending on where you are, these 20 that display symptoms may not even be able to get tested. But let's assume, for the benefit of this demonstration, that all 20 of these people have fit the minimum requirement. They've had the boxes checked. That allow them to get tested. And let's say out of these people who are all now displaying symptoms are confirmed to have coronavirus. And out of the 20, let's say five are hospitalized. 50 people have it. 20 people were tested and confirmed, 5 people were hospitalized. Out of these 5 people hospitalized, let's just say that 3 wind up in critical care. And out of these 3 that are in critical care, 1 dies. Now we have to understand how this relationship between these numbers can alter the percentages and a lot of times even the projections on how people are trying to treat and handle this disease. So now these again are all just representative figures and amounts. These aren't scaled to the actual distribution uh, and subsets of what we're seeing, but just to show how these numbers can be skewed. Because if we were to look at this situation, and let's say this is a disease, we'll call it the uh, mouse pad disease, right? Well, this mouse pad disease, of which 50 people are affected, only 20 people were checked. Of the 20, five had to be hospitalized, three had to be put in intensive care, and one died. As their capability to determine mortality rate is concerned, they're going to look at one, not of 50. They're going to look of one out of 20. So that's a 5% mortality. They're going to say that 20 people have it and one person died. Now, right now, here's a couple of things that our, you know, governments and agencies of governments are running into an issue with. They have no means to test everybody. So we don't know the total number of people that have this disease. When you hear people on the, on, uh, the news and, and social media talking about the denominator, the denominator is this huge set of everybody that has it. There's no way to test the denominator unless you test every single citizen then you would know the denominator. 
estimates could be made. Obviously, they need to be made because testing everybody isn't going to be a thing. But it is imperative that we understand without knowing this number, we cannot know an accurate mortality rate. Because what appears to be in this, you know, completely hypothetical example, one out of 20, a 5%, is actually one out of 50, which would be a 2%. There are estimates now when it comes to coronavirus that it may very well be far under 1% of total people that have it that wind up dying. And that is without sort of overlaying uh, different uh, other categorical statistics or, or, you know, comorbidities and things like old age and pre-existing, you know, health conditions and whatnot. So we need to understand the mortality rate right now is only being determined by this. So here's another thing. If 50 people have it and 20 people demonstrate symptoms, well, one of the things that I did in my example was I tested all 20 people. Well, right now there are certain uh, locations where all the people that are showing, displaying the symptoms that warrant them getting testing are being tested. And this is still in America. I'm not even talking about other countries. So out of these 20, let's say you only have 10 tests, right? So that's two, four, six, eight, 10. Let's say that you only had 10 tests. Well, now the one person that died is one of 10 confirmed cases. That gives you a 10% mortality rate based on this. But only because you weren't able to test the other people that had symptoms, let alone test all of the citizens that could potentially be infected with the disease. So why am I, I, sh why am I showing you this? It's because not everybody, you know, is engaging the math because I think a lot of people think it's, it's intimidating, it's overwhelming, and it shouldn't be. Right now, there are a bunch of people dying, right? And anybody dying is, is unfortunate, it's tragic, it's sad, it's, it's everything negative that you could, you could attach to that type of outcome. But we coexist with threats, risks, and existing uh, diseases as, a, as a, a function of living in modern society. When we look at deaths that occur from other causes, we've learned to coexist with these risks involved. Certainly, we have certain precautions that we take naturally to avoid some of these risks, right? How many deaths by way of automobile? All right, well, we don't drink and drive. We have a test that somebody has to pass before they could uh, operate a vehicle. Uh, we have seatbelts. We have safety features on different car models. Like We do things to mitigate these risks. And there's going to come a point, whether people want to accept it or not, that we need to mitigate the risk of coronavirus also. I don't have any answers uh, of when that's going to be. I don't even have answers on how that should be un un unpacked. But what I will say is it is an inevitability because this has sort of, I guess, fought away fought its way to become, you know, uh, somebody who gets or something that gets a seat at the table of risks that we're going to have to learn how to live with. But when it comes to the numbers, understand we don't know the total number of people that have had it. So it is impossible to determine what the mortality rate is. The more people that are tested, the more cases are confirmed. That is a good thing because the test doesn't give them the case. The test, the test discovers the case. And if people have it, we want to know they have it. So as the cases go up, that is a good thing because it brings us closer to having a more accurate understanding of how many people are walking around with this disease. I appreciate you guys. Hope that helped. Be good.